One of the most controversial issues that the United States faces is balancing the teachings of science and religion. However, there was no other time where this issue was on broader dis display than in the summer of 1925 in the John Scopes trial, more commonly known as the Monkey Trial. The lawsuit centered around a 25-year-old high school science teacher named John Scopes. He broke the law of the Butler Act, which was an act prohibiting the teaching of the evolution theory in all universities, normals, and all other public schools of Tennessee, which are supported in whole or in part by the public school funds of the state and to provide penalties for the violations thereof. With the passing of this law, many citizens of Dayton were upset and felt that their rights were being infringed upon. As a result, they decided to devise a plan where they would take a willing teacher and have him teach the theory of evolutionism to his students. John Scopes decided that he would be the man to stand up to the court of Tennessee and fight for the right to teach the theories of evolutionism, even if it meant opposing the teachings of the church while facing criminal charges. Evolutionism is the theory that organisms evolved over millions of years, from simple to complex, through survival of the fittest, which included humans. This was first publicized in the book The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. However, this was met with much skepticism by the Christian community as many thought that it meant humans were created from monkeys. This contradicted many Christian beliefs and argued that this theory was only consistent with atheism. As a result, in March of 1925, Tennessee passed the Butler Act which placed a fine upon any teachings that taught the ideas of evolution. The law was not meant to be seriously enforced though, as it was more so used as a symbol to say that Darwin's theories were not legitimate, while the only real teachings that mattered were the ones from religion. John Scopes decided that he would be the man to oppose this law, saying, he had to teach science and the law was unconstitutional anyway. As a result, he was arrested in Dayton, Tennessee and was put on trial. To some, he was an ambassador of the devil, while to others, he was a savior of science. Little do you know that this would become one of the most highly publicized trials in all of American history. Mr. Fires. Colonel Drummond. Can't you understand that if you take a law like evolution and you make it a crime to teach it in the public schools, tomorrow you can make it a crime to teach it in the private schools? And tomorrow you may make it a crime to read about it, and soon you may ban books and newspapers. And then you may turn Catholic against Protestant, and Protestant against Protestant, and try to foist your own religion upon the mind of man. If you can do one, you can do the other, because fanaticism and ignorance is forever busy and needs feeding. And soon, Your Honor, with banners flying, and with drums beating, we'll be marching backward, backward, through the glorious ages of that 16th century, when bigots burned the man who dared bring enlightenment and intelligence to the human mind. The Scopes trial began on July 10, 1925, in Dayton, Tennessee. Thousands of people came from all over the country to see the trial live. The radio station, WGN, from Chicago even came to broadcast the trial across the country. It marked the first time in history that a lawsuit would be broadcasted live over radio. Part of the reason for so much attention was the fact that renowned atheist Clarence Darrow was selected as the attorney to defend Scopes against William Jennings Bryan, who was previously selected as the Democratic presidential nominee in 1896, 1900, and 1908. The trial was viewed as a cage match between science and religion. The strategy that Darrow decided to take was to focus the trial on whether or not the Butler Act was fair and constitutional, since Scopes admitted to teaching evolution. On the other hand, Brian tried to disprove the theories of evolution and confirm the origin stories of the Bible. The most memorable moment of the trial was when Darrow decided to put Brian on the stand and question him on his knowledge of the Bible, an attempt to show doubt and uncertainty in the actual facts of the religion's teachings. However, the jury was not present to hear the cross-examination and eventually convicted Scopes as guilty on July 21st. However, Darrow was able to use the trial to embarrass fundamentalist views and bring about more acceptance for evolutionist theories. Now, as explained earlier, there were two outlooks on human evolution. At this time, the majority of United States citizens believed in either evolution from a religious point of view or from a scientific point of view. The monkey trial, so to speak, had a major effect on the argument of evolution being religious versus scientific. The trial brought about an increasing realization in the Christian faith that there were two paths of evolution, religious and scientific. Although they believed in the biblical viewpoint of evolution, they gained a respect for the scientific viewpoint, and both sides no longer had a strong opposition towards the other's ideas of evolution. The trial taught both sides of the argument and the American people 
that there would always be more than one answer and to respect others' opinions and beliefs. The trials had a major effect on religion, mainly Christianity in America. The problem was that many southern states refused to follow the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, the separation of church and state. The monkey trial managed to reveal the flaw in many of these southern states that they were intruding upon the American people's rights by putting aside certain views because they did not follow the same values as them. The South believed in evolution from a religious standpoint and denied the teachings of it through a logical view, science. While the trial did have some of an impact on the thought process of the American people in revealing many states' refusal to follow the separation of church and state, it failed to accomplish its main purpose, to eliminate bills such as the Butler Act, ones that forbid schools from educating students on the science behind evolution. Although the trial failed to accomplish its main goal, it still brought out a great deal of publicity to the education of evolution. The trial not only resulted in the change of the American people's outlook on evolution and brought publicity to the situation, but it also changed state laws on teaching evolution. In less than two years, there were 13 states that began the process of placing laws against the teaching of evolution. Eleven of those 13 attempts to place laws against teaching evolution were put down and failed to pass. The only states that did manage to pass these anti-evolution teaching laws were Mississippi and Arkansas, carrying out the actions of the Butler Act. Anti-evolution people continued to attempt to ban the teaching of evolution, or at the very least uh, teach both the scientific and religious viewpoints of evolution. Anti-evolutionists argued against the teaching of evolution throughout the 1920s. It was the talk of the decade due to the large-scale John Scopes trial. So you're probably wondering, how does this affect us in today's world? The John Scopes trial not only left an impact on American teachings for years to come, it also left, left a lasting effect on the teachings of evolution in the United States. Before the Scopes trial, many biology textbooks had entire chapters dedicated to evolution, while few did not even mention the word evolution. Shortly after the trial, the biology textbooks removed anything that it included on pr evolution prior to the court case. Throughout the years to come, the textbooks began to include theories of evolution. Today, most biology textbooks that are of note do include the theories of evolution. While the theories of evolution are included in these textbooks, they are still the most sensitive topic in them. Many books prefer to use the term creationism rather than evolutionism to attempt to ease the animosity revolving around the topic. In today's politi politics, Republican Party platforms promote evolution as creationism and connect the issue of evolution to controversial issues such as abortion and birth control. Most documents that include evolution provide disclaimers saying that it is only a theory or an opinion. Some states, such as Alabama, even require by law these types of disclaimers. The theory of evolution is still a controversial topic in today's public politics, religion, and ed education. However, the John Scopes trial helped to gain more acceptance between religious beliefs and Darwinian beliefs.